Welcome to video 31 in our van build series. Today we're going to build the cabinet that will house our Dometic CRX50 compressor refrigerator. The CRX50 has a removable freezer compartment in the event you want to use all of the space as a refrigerator and is ideally suited for use with our solar power. The cabinet itself will be built from one half inch Baltic birch. The cabinet will have four drawers and will occupy the majority of the space under the front of the bed. This is my second time working with Baltic birch, with a few lessons learned under my belt from when I built our kitchen cabinet back in video 18. Enough talk, let's get started. start with ripping a new sheet of Baltic. All rough cuts are completed with a skill saw one quarter inch larger than needed and then trimmed to size with precision on the table saw. A great day to be working inside. When I'm completing notch cuts I mark the fence to know where to stop. Prior to using a jig saw I scribe the wood to prevent tear out. Again, another rough cut with a skill saw, followed by a precision cut with a table saw. Like the kitchen cabinets, I'll be making extensive use of carpenter's glue and Craig pocket holes. I have the collar set up for half inch plywood. Here you can see how the screws penetrate the wood. The real strength with Craig's system is that it allows you to screw across the grain and into the face of the plywood rather than in the end. Here I have a square clamped to the first piece to ensure it stays straight while the glue sets. Okay, while the glue sets up, I just have a little bit of tape holding it snug. So we take a look here. Looking good. All right, so we'll let that set. These four blocks are just to aid in construction. They will hold the fridge shelf flat and even while I screw it into place. They will be removed once the shelf is installed. The tape on the wall was to protect the wall from glue during installation. Our installation calls for a left hand swing door. Thankfully, the CRX50 refrigerator can accommodate both left and right swings. This is a very quick job, perhaps not more than 10 minutes. It's just a matter of removing the hardware, swapping the hinges and latches from left to right, and reassemble. Again, maybe 10 minutes. There you go. The tools are right here. According to the manual, the CRX50 is 380 millimeters wide, or 14.96 inches. So I made the opening exactly 15 inches wide. I knew it was going to be tight, and it is. So now that I know the fridge fits, I can remove it, set it aside, and start working on the drawers. This is a rough cut for the drawer faces, followed by a precision cut on the table saw. I start with a single piece, which will later be cut into individual drawer fronts. This way the grain will match across all the drawers. Okay, I've got to take about one eighth of an inch off each side. It's got to fit in on each side. We'll go to the drawer front. Each drawer will be about eight inches deep. Here I am ripping the material that will make up the drawer sides and back. 
I set up a stop on the radial arm saw to ensure the drawer sides are the same length. Back to the Craig jig to secure the drawer sides to the drawer ends. Here I have secured a stop plate at the end of the workbench. This secure stop piece allows me to connect the drawer sides to the drawer ends. It ensures that while I'm driving the Craig screws, the piece stays secure. It not only provides vertical and lateral support, it ensures the entire piece doesn't widen while you screw it in. This is very important when the drawer has to fit in a predefined space. Here are six drawer halves. With the glue set, I continue with the drawer assembly, connecting the two halves together. Three drawer shells complete. I'm using scrap 3 16 inch plywood for the drawer bottoms. Not by choice, I just have the material left over from a previous job. I really do try to reuse or repurpose material whenever I can. The bottom will be attached with wood glue and brad nails. Three drawers finished. The boxes are finished, but the drawer fronts have not yet been installed. A day later, we started to sand and prepare these drawers for polyurethane. Here I'm setting a drill bit depth marker at 3 eighths of an inch. Although we are nowhere finished the cabinet, we thought we would add the polyurethane to the drawers before we installed the hardware on them. This just makes the job a little easier for us when we later have to finish the whole unit. The drawers will already be done. We used a foam brush to apply the polyurethane. Looking pretty good. Off camera, I made a quick template tool for placing drawer poles with precision. The template captures the edge and the top of the drawer front and provides a hole to place each drawer pull in exactly the same spot. This template has three holes as I have used the same template to accommodate different drawer sizes. For the precise placement of the drawer fronts, I use 1 8 inch aluminum spacers. Clamp the drawer front in place. Screw in four partially countersunk three-quarter inch number eight wood screws. Remove the clamps and spacers. And I have a finished drawer ready for final sanding. For the three main drawers, I added one or two magnetic catches to each drawer to ensure they stay closed while traveling. Here I'm using a few little wood spacers to capture setbacks from the front as well as distance above the slider. Then, using the same wood spacer, I mark the location of the brass magnetic catch. Incidentally, this brass magnetic catch is from Lee Valley. The drill bit has a tape marking of 3 8 of an inch. So an hour or so later and we have three drawers installed. Just one small drawer left, just below the fridge. Like before, I first installed the drawer sliders. Using just a small scrap piece of one half inch Baltic birch, I quickly cut the drawer sides and ends. Since it's just a couple of pieces, I just used the table saw to cut the drawer sides to length. Back to the Craig jig for mounting screws and then assembly. Off camera, I cut the drawer bottom from a scrap piece of 3 16 plywood. Like before, glue and brad nails make a quick job of this. The last thing to do is to attach the drawer slides and then test everything. I temporarily place the entire cabinet in the van to make sure everything fits. I don't want any surprises after I finish the cabinet. Looks like we're good to go. 
Next, I'll install the Baltic Birch edge banding, sand the entire cabinet, and then cover it with polyurethane. This is 3 quarter inch heat activated iron on Baltic Birch edging. After several passes with the iron, I held the iron at about a 30 degree angle to ensure the adhesive securely holds the edge of the tape. There is a special tool made for this job, an edge banding trimmer. I don't own one and I don't need one for this small job. A sharp utility knife will do the trick. 120 sandpaper cleans up the edges really nice. Well, let's take a closer look at this. That looks like a solid piece of Baltic birch. This work was followed by several hours of sanding, leading to about three hours of applying the polyurethane. Not particularly rewarding work, but necessary. With the cabinet finished, time to install it into the van. I designed the cabinet to be about one quarter inch shorter than the height of the bed rails. That way I can use a shim to get the exact height. Cutting and then placing one of two shims. The other shims are here just to hold the workpiece steady while I bolt it in place. I'm using two 5 16 one and a half inch bolts, as well as two one and a half inch wood screws to hold the cabinet to the floor. I slip the fridge into place. Great view of the back side of my head while I pre-drill the two mounting screws. I ran the electrical and here I'm just using a couple zip ties to secure the wiring. I pop the breaker in place and turn the fridge on. Well, I've installed the last drawer and I'm done. Next, I'm going to complete the electrical on our grey water tank valve. Hey, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.